What is the greatest country on Earth? Is it Russia, Austria, Kenya, India, Australia, other countries that don't end in year? Canada, France, Brazil, Somalia? No, it's not Somalia. <laughs> Asking this question, what is the world's greatest country, really forces you to think about what qualities and components come together and coalesce into one amazing country that is simply the best better than all the rest. As you can imagine, answering this question is a little bit more complex than one might initially think. It is quite the pickle, but I intend to unpickle it. Let's begin with the basics. What is greatness? Well, the word greatness is a term that is generally used to refer to some form of superiority. A person, thing, or location that is just better than the alternatives. If a person has achieved greatness, they are, either through natural talent or learned ability, just better than everyone else at what they do. But how does this apply to countries? What components and qualities and ideals and values values make a country great, i.e. what makes one country superior to another. Sounds to me like we need some kind of starting point, one particular country that we can just bounce ideas off. But which country should we use, I hear you ask, and it's not up to you. It's my video. We're gonna start with America, both because mocking America is a time-honored European tradition, and because it's a genuinely good starting point. Whatever your views on America are, it is pretty undeniable that America is one of the most prominent countries on Earth. It is extremely powerful, incredibly rich, and very, very large. And it does seem as though there are certain elements of American society who do genuinely seem to believe that America is just the best. I'm not saying this is true of every American, or even the majority of Americans, but Fox News exists. Just watch that for like 30 seconds and you will understand completely where I'm coming from. So now our question becomes, is America the world's greatest country? Let's have a look. There are a whole bunch of different metrics that you can look to to try and get an idea of how different countries stack up against each other. Let's start with GDP, which stands for Gross Domestic Product, and very, very loosely generally refers to how much money a country makes. The country with the highest GDP is... America! Well, oh, we're off to a good start. Like I said, America's fucking loaded. What about GDP per capita, which is gross domestic product per person? America? No. Depending on who you ask, it's either Luxembourg, Monaco, or Liechtenstein. Okay, well, America has some competition. Let's keep going. The Human Development Index, or HDI, is a composite statistic of life expectancy, education, and income indices. Fancy. Which country currently has the highest HDI? Is it America? No. Norway. Okay, so one apiece for all those five countries. Let's keep going. Let's move on to the Social Progress Index, which measures the extent to which a country provides for the social and environmental needs of its people. The country with the highest Social Progress Index is... Sweden. Not America. Moving on to the Quality of Life Index. Pretty self-explanatory. It measures the quality of life within a country based on qualitative and quantitative data. The country with the highest quality of life is, um, the island. Island. Not America. Again. The World Happiness Report. Again, does what it says on the tin. Just measures the general happiness of a country's inhabitants. Americans gotta win that. Americans are happy people. Show me America. Denmark. The country with the lowest infant mortality rate. Monaco. The country with the highest life expectancy. Monaco, again. Shit. The Democracy Index, which just measures how well a country is functioning as a democracy. Come on, America's gotta win this one. Americans are always going on about their democracy. That's all they fucking talk about. Democracy this, democracy that. Come on, it's gotta be America. Norway again. Oh. Okay. The Freedom Index. The Freedom Index measures political rights and civil liberties. Freedom. It's gotta be America. What country do you think about when you hear the word freedom? America's got this in the bag, right? Nope. Sorry, America. New Zealand is the winner of that category. Wow. Okay, America's gotta win something. Is it the biggest country on Earth? Nope, that's Russia. Okay. The country with the longest coastline? Nope, Canada. The country with the highest mountain? Nope, that's Nepal. Well, actually, technically, it's part of the range of mountains called the Himalayas, which is actually on the border between Nepal and China. Um, but neither Nepal or China are America, so... The country with the longest river. The general consensus is that the longest river in the world is the Nile, which is most commonly associated with Egypt, but it actually runs through several different countries, none of which, though, are conspicuously America. <sighs> the highest temperature ever recorded. Fuck yes! 56.7 degrees Celsius recorded in Death Valley, California, which is in America. We got one, guys. So, America doesn't win many of these. Very few. 
Barely any. So let's discard America for a while and focus on some of the countries that did win. The country that won most of those throughout that entire list of metrics is Monaco. It topped the leaderboards of highest GDP per capita, highest life expectancy, and lowest infant mortality. But to be fair, highest life expectancy, lowest infant mortality. Basically, people from Monaco are just very good at not dying. Does that make Monaco better than other countries per se? And the GDP per capita it kind of shares with two other countries. I don't think Monaco really counts. Let's go with the country that has the highest democracy index and the highest HDI, which is Norway. So, there we go. That's it. Solved. Norway. It's the best country on earth. Or is it? Remember that the HDI is a composite statistic of income, life expectancy, and education levels. There's more to life than living a particularly long time, knowing a lot of stuff, and making a lot of money. Who cares if you've got the greatest democracy on earth if you don't have freedom? Yeah. The freest country on earth is New Zealand. So that's it. New Zealand is the greatest country on earth. Or is it? What's the point of being free if you ain't happy? Denmark. Denmark is the happiest nation on earth. You know, they might not be as free or as democratic or make as much money or live as long as other countries, but damn it, the Danes are happy. Denmark, greatest country on earth. <sighs> Or is it? There's so much more to a country than its political composition. You've got to take into account its culture, its geography and environment, its food, its people, its habits and customs. If someone has a personality that just doesn't fit with the Danish way of life, are they going to be very happy in Denmark, the happiest place on earth? Not Disneyland? No, of course not. To that person, Denmark's gonna be a really shit country. Just the armpit of Europe. That's what we should start calling it. So much of what makes it nice to live somewhere is formed by your own subjective personal preferences. Take my country for instance. If you've watched a substantial amount of my videos on my old channel or you saw me on talk, you will know that I'm not a massive fan of the monarchy. That's an understatement. Not a massive fan. That makes it seem like, I, like the monarchy is like just a food that I don't like. I fucking hate the fact that we have a monarchy. I don't like the monarchy. I don't I don't like the fact that we have an established church. I'm not a fan of the deficit of protections for civil liberties. I hate pretty much everything that this government has done, led by Lord Vo I mean, David Cameron. There are a lot of things that I legitimately hate about the UK, but I still kind of love it. I love the people, I love the culture, I love our national sense of humour, I love our much maligned cuisine. I'm British, and I'm proud to be British. So what's the conclusion? There is no greatest country on earth, really. Some countries do better than others in various ways, but ultimately national greatness is a very subjective ideal. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. But let's have another look at it. What is the worst country on earth? I'll give you a second to think about that. North Korea. It's North Korea. North Korea is a fucking shite country. North Korea is a totalitarian dictatorship. Also known as the DPRK, which stands for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. It is neither democratic, literally coming dead last in the democracy index behind countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran. Nor is it a republic, as it is led by the hereditary rule of the Kim family, which kind of makes it some form of de facto absolute monarchy. There is a substantial and pervasive cult of personality in North Korea, with songs, paintings, sculptures, public holidays, legends, myths, surrounding the Kim family found in every facet of North Korean culture. Every home in North Korea is required by law to have a picture of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il on the wall somewhere in the house, with absolutely nothing else on the wall. Every train station and airport features prominent pictures of Kim Jong-il and Kim Il-sung. There are literally tens of thousands of statues of Kim Il-sung in North Korea. This cult of personality is the most extensive in the world, with many other examples of propaganda and manipulation being used to maintain the pseudo-religious cult of personality which surrounds the Kim family. It is illegal to show any form of disrespect to the Kims. Every media outlet is controlled by the government, and one of the primary functions of the North Korean media, in the form of books, films, and news media, is simply to prop up the regime. Only coverage favourable to the regime is allowed. The vast, vast majority of North Koreans have no access to mobile phones or the global internet. There is no freedom of the press, there is no freedom of religion or movement, North Koreans are not allowed to leave the country, and visiting foreigners are always under heavy surveillance. There is no freedom of speech or expression. Expression. Executions, including public executions, are common for many crimes. Political dissidents and those deemed to be enemies of the state are, along with their entire families, sent to labour camps for life. If anyone in a labour camp attempts to escape or violates camp rules, they will be publicly executed. Children born in labour camps will die there. North Korea's food production levels are some of the lowest in the world, leading to a full-blown famine in the 1990s and reported instances of cannibalism in early 2013. Some have suggested that this may have been orchestrated intentionally by the regime as a form of social oppression. It is estimated that approximately 2.1 million people have died at the hands of the North Korean regime. And to top it all off, the North Korean embassy in London 
is literally a house in Acton. There I am in front of the North Korean embassy. I went to visit it in Acton because I'm a fucking nerd and that's the kind of thing I enjoy doing because it's super creepy and weird. Again, I repeat, it is literally a house in Acton and Acton is already a fucking shithole. With all this in mind, is it really that controversial to suggest that North Korea is the worst country? No doubt there are some North Koreans who legitimately love their country. But even then, can we trust these subjective accounts based on the levels of political manipulation, propaganda, and brainwashing that exists in the country. In my subjective opinion, North Korea is objectively the worst country. I cannot overstate this. It fucking sucks. Greatest country in the world? Eh, there isn't really one single greatest country in the world. It depends. It's all subjective. Worst country in the world? Fucking North Korea. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment, favorite this video, share it, subscribe if you wish. Follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, ask me a question on Tumblr, all that YouTube-y, social media-y jazz. Uh, and that's me. I'm done. See you later. Bye.